Shalom, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to speak on the topic of salvation as I was having a conversation with the beloved brother, uh, Rachwaya Kwam, from the GMS London camp. Um, and we were discussing how when Christians speak on salvation, you know, they don't go according to the Holy Scriptures. They go according, all right, to what they learn at seminary school and according to their own righteousness, all right? And as we're going to show you uh, going into this article here, which we're not going to read at all, we're going to get a few points. They love to X out the chosen seed. They love to X out the Israelites, okay, and establish what is known as replacement theology. They do it subtly, all right? And now that the true narrative is being, is being spoken by the true chosen seed who was prophesied to be raised up in the latter days, all right? Now you have these Christians scrambling all over the place, all right? And they're not standing, they're not using the Bible to stand up against the wickedness that's going on in this world and that's being, you know, perpetuated which boasts itself up against the Most High and His Only Begotten Son. They're using the scriptures to somehow uh, uh, destroy prophecy, okay? And if you think you're going to somehow destroy or undermine what is written, okay, you're going to have a, a destiny with reality very soon, okay? And reality is already hitting you in the face as the seed, all right, who are heirs to that promise, the remnant, According to the book of Isaiah, according to the book of Romans, okay, which quotes Isaiah, which quotes Hosea, all right, the remnant is being raised up and the true understanding is being taught, okay? Now, when you deal with the topic of salvation, in a nutshell, as we'll show you, all right, it's the Israelites receiving new bodies and entering into the new covenant where sin will have no dominion over us, Okay? Christians don't like to bring that out because heaven will be on earth. Your average Christian thinks heaven will some be somewhere in the sky. Okay, we will have bodies on earth. The only nation on the planet earth that will have the the, the new covenant and those perfect bodies were and, and, and who will never sin again is the nation of Israel. Okay, but we'll break that all down. But uh, let's go into this article real quick. Um, salvation. I just use Google and I type in what is salvation according to Christianity and the uh, beloved brother as well has an article he's going to go into. So I'll share that video if you look at the post on this page. So it says the idea of salvation is a very important part of Christianity. OK, and when you go into the scriptures, the idea of salvation, OK, was always pertaining to the Israelites. All right. Even when Yahawashai was on the scene in the book of Acts before he went back to the right hand side, what did his disciples ask him? Are you now going to restore the kingdom to the Israelites? OK, and he told him it's not for you to know the times. All right. But you're going to have to even prophesy on the, the, the uttermost parts of the, the, the world, which is over here in Babylon, the great. OK, so the, 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 the prophets were always concerned with Israel being reconciled back to the most high. OK, all of the, the, the whole book is dealing with this chosen seed in their fall from grace, fall from their glory. OK, history. All right. And ultimately, the promise of them being redeemed back, reconciled back. When you, you hear this term reconcile. All right. Which that would that's what Yahweh came to do right here real quick. All right. Hebrews 2 and 17, wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, all right, which we know the brethren are Israelites, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people, okay? And according to the, the narrative of the whole book, the volume of the book, because that's what we deal with, we, ve we deal with the volume of the book, okay? Hebrews 10 and 7, then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. 
You can't just open the book up in Matthew and preach this particular religion and gospel without adding everything that was promised in the first testament. OK, the first covenant. OK, and who sinned in that covenant? We'll cover those things today and I'll try to be as precise as possible. So we deal with the volume of the book. You can't just open up in Matthew and, and disregard all of this history and these prophecies that the prophets were dealing with. And the term reconcile or the reconciliation. OK, the root. All right. This is the etymology. OK. It says to restore to union and friendship after estrangement or variance. Now, that's very important to understand because it was the Israelites who received the covenant. All right. Given by the most high through his angel, through Moses, Aaron. And it was the Israelites who broke. That marriage who disobeyed that covenant. OK, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, as we're going to show you, was sent to shed his blood so that we can be redeemed back to the father. OK, and through this grace period, eventually enter into the second covenant. See. So to restore union. Now, when you read these things, what these people like to do is it says also God or Hamashiach restore mankind sinners. See, they like to add mankind. Mankind was not under that first covenant. Israelites were under that first covenant. Israelites sinned and broke that covenant. Therefore, they needed to be restored, redeemed to favor. And that's going to be through a grace period. To bring together again, if the nations were never all right together with the most high under the first covenant, how can they be brought back? And we'll deal with all of these narratives. All right. As we go forth in this lesson. OK, so the idea of salvation is a very important part of Christianity. OK. And it's closely connected with the idea of an atonement. OK, atonement for sins. Under the first covenant, you had Aaron and his sons who dealt with the duties, all right, of atonement. You had the Day of Atonement, okay, where he prayed for, uh, basically it was a, a sacrifice offered up for himself, all right, the high priest, and for the sins of Israel, okay. Well, Yahweh Shai, all right, offered up himself. All right. Once as an atonement for us, you see, it says Christians believe that Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross to make salvation possible for humans. Now, is that in line with the Holy Scriptures? Let's get the book of Acts. The fifth chapter. OK. Acts five and twenty nine. It says, and then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. See, and that's what we're doing. We're not following the status quo. We're following the, 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 the script. We're sticking to the script. The God of our fathers, Yahweh, who's the fathers, the Israelites, raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. And if you notice, we're saying Yahweh Shai and not Jesus. This is a Greek term. All right. The uh, Messiah was given a Hebrew name. OK, he came from Hebrew people. He was from the loins and lineage of David. OK, and through this. And this is a transliteration. This is not even a translation. OK, of the word Joshua, which ultimately in the Hebrew is Yahawashai. All right. We have lessons on that. If you need that understanding, ask and you shall receive. We have the lessons. OK, so the God of our fathers raised up Yahawashai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. All right. Because uh, those of the circumcision, for the most part, rejected Yahweh Shai. OK, and, and lied and used Gal to have him crucified. OK, it says him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. See, even when John the Baptist was on the scene, who was he telling to repent? Israelites. OK, as a matter of fact, Acts, the 13th chapter. OK. OK, Acts 13 and 24, when John had first preached before his coming 
the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. See, it was the Israelites who sinned. Okay, but as you see, what Christians do, all right, is they want to include all humans. And the Bible was never dealing with all humans. Okay, the Bible is dealing with a chosen seed. It starts with Adam. Okay, through Seth. Okay, and you have the sons of God who they fell. Okay, and when you follow the narrative, it leads all the way uh, from Noah, Shem, or Faxad, all the way up to our forefather Abraham, who restored all things. The Heavenly Father, through him, had all things restored to that lineage. Okay, and a promise was given unto him to restore us back to Eden. He had a son named Isaac, okay, who had a son named Jacob. That's how the promise is tracked for the, uh, the purpose of salvation. Jacob had 12 sons, all right? One of them, the fourth one named Judah, okay, through his uh, uh, son, Perez, all right, came the, the lineage in which the Messiah would come through, all right, which David himself came through that lineage, Solomon, and eventually the Messiah. This is what tracks, okay, and how you are to determine salvation. And we'll back all of these things up with scripture. All right. I just wanted to uh, read a few things here. All right. It says the nature of salvation. Salvation is the act of delivering or keeping away from evil or saving from sin. All right. Which is true. Okay. The thing is whose sins needed to be redeemed and covered. Okay. Who's going to receive the mercies of David? Is it all nations? Okay, when the throne of David is established, will all nations be a part of that government? Absolutely not. Okay, especially when prophecy says the tabernacle of David is going to be established as in the days of old. <laughs> anyway, it says um, sin is an act that is against God's will and therefore morally wrong. All right. Now, sin, according to the Holy Scriptures, first John three and four. OK, first John three and four, for whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. You see. OK. And the transgressions can be found according to the first covenant. OK. Joshua 7 and 11, Israel have sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. All right. Therefore, what happened? We were given a bill of divorcement. Isaiah 50 and 1, thus saith the Lord, where is your bill of your mother's divorcement? Whom I have put away. Who did he put away? Judah and Ephraim, the northern and southern kingdom, the Israelites. See? Therefore, we needed to be redeemed back. See? It was our iniquities that led to a curse. All right? And what Yahweh did was redeem us for the, from the curse of the law so that we can receive the blessing of Abraham and the mercy of David. All right? To be brought back to the land. He's the kinsman redeemer. All right? We would need our sins covered. And that's the importance of grace, the blood of Yahweh Shai. Okay. And the new covenant. All right. So. It was our iniquities that led to a divorcement. Yet in the whole book of Isaiah and throughout the whole Bible, Hosea, all of these scriptures speak of the Lord eventually having mercy and bringing us back. All right, but let's get some more here and then we'll get into the scriptures I got. All right, I'm just off the top of the head with these. It's just coming as I read. It says, um, so you see how the Israelites have not come up once. Okay. It says sin is an act against God's will and therefore morally wrong. All right, and they'll say something like a so-called curse word is a, is a, is a sin. Or sex before marriage. 
which sex consummated marriage. Of course, there was, uh, you know, uh, particular writings for inheritance purposes. But what consummated a marriage was sex. You cannot leave that out. And you still have Israelites that can't get it through their head. Sex consummated a marriage without the act of sex. There is no union. You're not one. OK, it says in Christianity, <laughs> see, there are two types of sin. The original sin, which was inherited from Adam and Eve. The first humans created by God, which that's off. OK, they were not the first uh, humans created by the most high. People were already being fruitful and multiplying. Adam and Eve. Well, first Adam, OK, represents the first man to receive order from the most high. And that can be found in second edges three all right speaking on adam and gave us a body unto adam which was without soul which was the workmanship with thine hand and did it breathe unto him the breath of life and he was made living before thee all right just as now that we receive this wisdom and understand the laws and everything our duties we are now living as it says in ezekiel 37 we were dry bones but then we became living once the breath was entered into us through the preaching right well, Adam was the first man, all right, to receive that on earth, all right? He's the first priest on earth, you see? And what did he receive? As you keep reading, verse 7, And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. The laws were oral, okay, which he transgressed, and immediately thou appointest death in him and in his generations, of whom came nations, tribes, people, kindreds, out of number which is just tracking the chosen seed. However, this would affect the whole entire planet Earth and all the inhabitants in it, okay? And as you keep reading, it leads up to Noah, okay? Then it goes to Abraham because it's tracking the chosen seed, see? But Christians wipe out all of that information and just say, well, Adam and Eve were the first two people the original sin was it was Adam fall, which really it was Eve who went off. OK. And Adam went off and followed her. OK. Which that's a foreshadowing of what would happen with this chosen seed, the church. All right. Breaking their union with their husband. OK. Anyway. <laughs> Whoo. A lot of scriptures coming to my mind, but let me stick to the script. It says they broke the perfect relationship between God and humans. And now you see Christians, you know, try to break these things down, try to go through the lineage of Adam through Seth. You know, tracking the lineage. They wasn't doing that before. Trying to talk about Esau. OK, now they're, they're now they're they're they're, they're, they're uh, bringing out particular things. Well, well Adam and Eve weren't the first because they're watching us, man. It says they broke the perfect relationship between God and humans by disobeying God's command. OK, and it was the chosen seed that the scriptures is tracking. They were the falling ones, the sons of Adam through Seth. They fell. All right. And that that whole narrative can be tracked if you read second edge the third chapter, which I happen to have a lesson on that. Then it says personal sin. This is the second type of, of sin. All right. These are the two types of sin. I and mean, we're reading according to Christianity. All right. It says personal sin. These are individual sins. They are consequences for a person's actions. For example, shoplifting would be considered a sin because it goes against a direct commandment from God not to steal. All right. Now, all individuals who steal. Yeah. According to the, you know, the, the, the law. It's off. But according to the Bible, who was giving the covenant to where these things mattered? The Israelites. And you see, not once have they mentioned Israelites as they're trying to break down the topic of salvation. Those covenants belong to the Israelites. It was the Israelites who broke this covenant. OK, therefore, Yahawashai was sent to redeem them back. For the purpose of salvation. All right. Many Christians believe that people who die with unforgiven sins will will not go to heaven. 
and may go to hell. Catholics believe they may be sent to purgatory and cr for Christian salvation is a crucial part of having a relationship with God while on earth and also in heaven. You see the confusion here? See? Christians, all right, for a long time and still up to this day, a lot of them run around with this narrative that when you die, you either go to heaven or hell. But through the Israelites, the understanding has come out. When you die, your spirit returns back to the father. Heaven and hell are conditions that are played, going to be played out on earth. Okay. Anyway. The role of the Messiah in salvation. Okay. Christians believe that the Messiah came to earth so that humans could receive salvation in a permanent way. Before Jesus salvation had come from following the laws given to moses in the torah see that when jesus died on the cross his death acted as a payment for the human sins that were a result of the disregarding of god's laws you see how that you see how they have just wiped the israelites from this whole narrative moses all right gave the law to the israelites they broke that they broke that covenant Okay, let's go here real quick. This is Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai, for he shall save his people from their sins. And the Messiah himself, when he was speaking to Paul, said his name in the Hebrew tongue. Is Jesus a Hebrew word? No. Okay. His name is Yahawashai, okay? And she shall bring forth a son, okay, which would be the, the, the seed of David, fulfilling prophecy. And thou shalt call his name Yahawashai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay? Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. Where is this written at? In the book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter. See that? Isaiah, the seventh chapter, which the whole book of Isaiah is dealing with the Israelites being saved. Okay? He came to save his people from their sins because according to that first covenant, it was the Israelites who sinned, which was the need for a new covenant. Okay, Hosea 6 and 7, but they like men have transgressed the covenant that they have dealt uh, there. Have they dealt treacherously against me? Okay. Okay. I mean, there's various scriptures to go into it, man. The Israelites received the covenant and the Israelites broke the covenant. Therefore came a curse. Okay. Therefore came a curse. Now, let's get Isaiah 45 and 17. Okay. But Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with an everlasting salvation you shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Showing you a world, okay, can be associated with the Israelites. There's many worlds. And when you go to the New Testament, the word for world is cosmos, meaning a particular order within the world. You got the basketball world. You got the Moabite world. You got the Edomite world. Okay, the, the, the ornament and ordainment he's dealing with as far as the world in the New Testament is the Israelites. You see, because what a lot of people love to do is go to John 3.16. Let's get that real quick. Real quick to make a quick point. John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, which is salvation, which we just read that Israel is going to be saved with that everlasting salvation, right? But here's the kick. All you have to do is start up at the 14th verse, and it tells you what it's talking about. You see? John 3 and 14, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, who was the serpent in the wilderness lifted up for? 
Hm? Numbers 21 and 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died because they were murmuring. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against Yahweh and against thee. Pray unto Yahweh to take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. He was a mediator. Right? And Yahweh said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon the pole, and make it, and, and it shall come to pass that when everyone is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. See? <laughs> And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Who's this dealing with? The Israelites. They are the ones who lived through this serpent being lifted up. So all you have to do is start at the 14th verse leading into the 16th verse to understand that Yahawashai would be lifted up. As the scriptures say, He would be. Let's get that. John 8 and 28. Then said Yahweh unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself but my as my Father has taught me. John 12 and 34. And the people answered him, we have heard out of the law that the Messiah abided forever. And how says thou the son of man must be lifted up? Who is the son of man? See, they didn't understand. However, he was that serpent that was going to be lifted up. That bronze serpent. For who? The Israelites to look to. For salvation. To be delivered from their enemies. It's the whole purpose of salvation is for we to be delivered from our enemies and be given new bodies so that sin no longer has dominion over us. And we'll get that as well. OK, let's get Luke. Luke, the first chapter. OK, Luke one. In sixty eight. Bless be the Lord God of our fathers. All right. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, all right, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Okay, Yahweh Shah's birth marked us being redeemed. He had to, you know, of course, grow up and eventually his blood would cover us, which was written from the foundation of the earth. Okay, he, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Key, okay? now when you. When you go to this word redeemed, Strong's G three thousand eighty-five, Lutrosis, Lutrosis, a ransoming, redemption, deliverance, especially from the penalty of sin. Who was under the penalty of sin? Hmm. Let's get Hebrews. Hebrews, the ninth chapter. I mean, in the book of Hebrews, I mean, who? who uh, OK, I guess everybody's a Hebrew, huh? No. OK, Hebrews nine. All right, and we'll read it in the NLT as well. And for this cause. I start at 13. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, because that's how our sins were redeemed under that first covenant, animal sacrifice. How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, okay, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Okay. And for this cause, he is the mediator of a new testament, a new covenant. That by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament covenant. That they which are called might receive the promises of eternal inheritance. 
NLT. That is why he is the one who mediates the new covenant between God and the people. See? And we're going to go to Hebrews 8 to clarify that. So that all who are called can receive the eternal inheritance. And what's the inheritance? The promised land that was promised to Abraham, his seed, Isaac, his seed, Jacob, and his seed, which would be as the sand of the sea in the latter days, but a remnant would return to be heirs to that promise. Okay? Because the, prom you can't, you, the, the promise can't be altered. See, Christians used to say, well, we understand the, 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 the first covenant was for the Israelites. Well, now it's for the, 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 the all nations. Then they change it. Well, the, in the Old Testament as well, it said all nations. It's, they're all over the place. They're not sticking to the script. And that seminary garbage you've been taught has failed you. Okay, the promise is accounted through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who had 12 sons who would be kings and in, in, in a company of kings will come out of them. Nations in a company of nations will come out of Jacob. Okay? That is why he is the one who mediates the new covenant between God and the people. Okay? Who received the first covenant so that all who are called can receive the inher eternal inheritance which God has promised them which Hamashi, for, for Hamashiach died to set them free from the penalty of sins they had committed under that first covenant. You got that, Jack? <laughs> Going back to what we read, okay, in Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai. He is the deliverer, for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay? And we have prophecy showing you in the, the kingdom, heathen will still sin. The only people who will never sin again, as we're going to get into 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, are the Israelites. Luke 1 and 68, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people and have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. OK. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, and this is why the Bible, all right, continuously uh, 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 lets you know that the messiah's father was from the loins and lineage of david okay the angel called the son of david luke the second chapter son of david he, he was from the loins and lineage of david to let you know this is that child that was promised to come through those loins okay through that lineage that's why he has a, a genealogy in the book of matthew As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from all the hand of the enemies who hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. And to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swear unto our father Abraham, and which we know that was passed through Isaac and Jacob when you follow the narrative of the story. OK, now. Let's read this again. Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. OK, so this earth will eventually be ran in 100 percent righteousness through the Israelites. OK, starting with the second Adam, Hamashiach Yahawashai. OK, he didn't make the earth in vain. He didn't make the earth to just be destroyed by heathen forever and ever and ever. No, he's going to set over it one that is profitable. Okay, and as you keep reading down. Verse 22, look unto me and ye shall be saved all the ends of the earth for I am God. There is none else. For I have sworn by myself. 
the word that is going out of my mouth in righteousness, the whole word, and it shall not return that unto me. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. And on earth, who is that going to be through? Yahweh Shai, all right? And the, the throne of David, okay, the 144, the 12 at the head of it, okay? But at the, at the very end, what does it say? In Yahweh shall all the seed of Israel be justified, okay? And show glory. So in Yahweh shall all the seed of Israel be justified and show glory. Okay, now how is that going to happen? Through the new covenant. Through receiving new bodies. Psalms 130 and 7. Let Israel hope in Yahweh, for with Yahweh there is mercy and with him is plenteous. All right, redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. What is iniquity? Sin. Let's look up the word iniquities. We are the ones that broke that covenant, man. We are the ones who need to be redeemed back. Okay. And the heathen will eventually benefit from that. Yeah, we talk about the captivity because you're going to go into captivity. Okay. All of these things are written. Okay. You heathen are going to have a rod of iron. Hit, you're going to be hit over the head with a rod of iron. But what is the purpose that you learn righteousness? Because look what you're doing right now. Look what our people are doing right now. You see? So the Lord's determination is that a right, his righteous seed run this earth in righteousness, which is what he wanted from the beginning with Adam and the sons of God. Iniquities. Okay. I, I, I won, I will not, perversity, depravity, iniquity, guilt, or punishment of iniquity, guilt, iniquity, all right, consequence or punishment for iniquity, which is sin, there you go, right there, mischief, sin, so the Bible from the beginning was tracking the holy seed. And how they've always transgressed and it led to what? Failure. Okay. Even when we had 40 years of peace under Solomon, eventually the sin took us, took that away. And the kingdom was split and separated. So it's Israel who was hoping for mercy and redemption from their iniquities. Okay. Hebrews, the eighth chapter. Okay. Man, it's breaking down the old covenant and the new covenant, man. I'll start at six. Hebrews 8, and no matter how many times we bring this out, Christians ain't going to take heed. This is for those who have ears to hear, who are comforted by the truth, okay? Not the people trying to look for a way to, 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 to undermine the Heavenly Father's authority. No, through His only begotten Son. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by which also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. See, it's it's a new covenant just upgraded with better promises. And the high priest of this covenant is Yahweh, not Aaron. Got that? Okay, all 12 tribes now have access. All 12 tribes will be priests. It's not after the order of Aaron. It's after the order of Melchizedek. So the same access Levi has, all the tribes will have. How about that? And that's a beautiful thing. But for some reason, Jake wants to push Levi, Levi, Levi. Anyway. For if that first covenant had been faultless, which what was the fault with the first covenant? This flesh. See, which is the importance of what we're getting into next, the new bodies. OK. So that we don't simply because this, this, this flesh is what separated us from the most high God, man. See, it was this flesh that caused us to go off. Give me one second here. 
All right. So for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second for finding fault with them. He said, behold, the days come, saith the Lord. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, all 12 tribes. OK. And when was the last time all 12 tribes were together at the time of David and Solomon? Since then, we've been split, scattered, according to prophecy. See, but Yahweh Shai, that blood is covering us for this moment to redeem us from the curse of the law, to receive the blessing of Abraham through the mercies of David to where our sins are covered. OK, that's only for the Israelites, Jack. OK, blessed is, is the man on whom the Lord, the Lord does not impute sin. And whose transgressions are covered. Transgressions according to what? The first covenant. Okay. We could still be charged for sins we did in past lives and sins we did in this life. But Yahweh Shai's blood covers us. So through this grace period, we could, we could uh, through the, the acts of faith, all right, be justified. All right. For the purpose of being restored back to the land which was promised to Abraham, which Adam was kicked out of that land. OK, and the sons of God, it says, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. OK, in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. It was a divorce. So what happens in a if we were divorced, we were no longer his people. We were no longer his prized possession. We needed redemption. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be unto them a God and they shall be unto me a people. All right. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. All who? Now, a Christian can just, just read this, right? What a Christian can do is disregard everything written there and jump to 11 and say, See, it here, here it says, All shall know me from least to greatest. See, all people are eligible for God's salvation through Jesus. See? <laughs> no, the all is 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 synonymous with who? The house of Israel and the house of Judah. All right, which are synonymous with the throne of David, the 12 tribes of Israel being brought back together, redeemed a remnant of them through Yahweh Shai. That is the new covenant where he will put his laws into our, our mind and our inward parts. Okay. And Paul describes this. Okay. The mystery of resurrection. You see, First Corinthians 15 and 50. OK, now this I say, brethren. Now, who's the brethren, according to Romans, that Paul is talking to? OK, as a matter of fact, we're going to get it. OK, we're going to make you all mad. Oh, they always bring out Romans nine. Well, does Romans nine disagree with the uh, uh, the, the, the 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 rest of the Bible? Romans 9 and 3, for I wish, all right, that myself, all right, were a curse from Hamashiach, for my brethren, for my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertained the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh Hamashiach came. He was born to redeem that seed, starting with the elect, a remnant, who was overall God bless forever, Amun. All right, the brethren, my brethren are the Israelites. See that? My brethren, my kinsmen. Okay, and who is the kinsman redeemer? Yahweh Shai. 
Okay, Abraham acted as a kinsman redeemer. Boaz acted as a kinsman redeemer, kinsman redeemer, but it was all pointing towards Hamashiach Yahawashai, who's the, the real kinsman redeemer, to who we're going to be brought back to the land, okay, for our inheritance, and so that we can have eternal life, the kingdom, okay? So let's see what Paul says here. And what is he quoting as we read? All right. First Corinthians 15 and 50. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. OK, so we're not going to take these bodies. Remember, it was this flesh. Or that separated us from our power. OK, as a matter of fact, when you get Genesis. The sixth chapter. When the descendants of Adam through Seth started to get more and more wicked. What did the Lord say? Genesis 6 and 3. Yahweh said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he is also flesh. See that? Yet his day shall be 120 years. All right. Remember Noah. All right. Came and prophesied. And who was he preaching to? He was preaching to his people to stop. Because a flood was coming. You see? But what does it say here? He is also flesh. So going back here. So it was flesh that has always separated us from perfection. And that's a condition of the battle. According to 2nd Edris the 7th chapter. Okay? So we ain't taking these bodies into the kingdom. Let's keep going. Behold, I show you a mystery. He's going to show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Okay, we shall be changed. He's speaking to his brethren. We shall be changed. All right. And what is the goal? We want to be brought back to our first estate. Okay. As a matter of fact, when you get first John, the third chapter. Because it was the sons of God who fell, all right? <laughs> First John 3 and 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it's through obedience, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. See, we're going to be like Yahweh Shai who sits on the right-hand side. We're going to be brought back to that heavenly estate, Okay? Let's get another precept in the book of Philippians, I believe. Philippians 3 and 21, who shall change our vow body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. OK, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. See, this is salvation. The scriptures we're going into are telling you what salvation is. All right, let's keep reading. This is the mystery. This is what we be telling you, brothers and sisters. We're going to be changed. Okay. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And what happens at that trumpet? The Lord gathers his elect. Okay. Let's get that real quick. Matthew 24. All right. In 31, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, even from one end of heaven unto the other. Okay, the main deliverance will be here in the land of the north, Babylon the great, as well as the, de the different areas where we are scattered. That's salvation. Okay, uh, as we read here. All right, or we always read here. We didn't read it today, but Revelation 11. Okay. And 11, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood up on their feet. We lived, right? And great fear fell upon them, which saw them. We're in that process now. We're just about finished, all right? Because during this time, we would prophesy, repent. The remnant would be gathered through the preaching of the word. We were in a dead state, all right, before the breath of life entered into us. All right. And what happens next? Verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying to them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. See that? 
So what is that process? This process is what, all right, you can tie to salvation. First, we're going to be saved from our enemies. Okay? We're going to be saved how? Being delivered up into the chariots. Okay? To gather the elect. And what's going to happen as we go up there? We're going to be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Incorruptible. We will be brought into immortal forms. For this corruptible must first put, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. See? From that point, we will never sin again as a people. All right. The, 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 eventually the rebels are going to be purged out. And all the seed of Israel will partake in the blessing. And the children that are born. OK. will put on what immortality. All of us. Meaning we will not die. We will not be subject to sin. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and the mortal shall have put on immortality, because that's when it was going to happen when we get changed. We get beamed up, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. See, once that happens, then is going to be brought to pass the saying that is written, which is where is that written? Isaiah, the 25th chapter. The same book where the remnant are promised to be delivered, man. Isaiah 25. In eight, I just jumped to the point. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God shall wipe away the tears from all faces in the rebuke of his people. Remember, Yahweh Shah is coming to save his people. He's going to take away the rebuke of his people. Why do we have rebuke? Because of our sins. You see, but Yahweh Shah's blood redeems us from the curse of the law so that we can receive the blessing of Abraham through the mercies of David. You see? That's all written. Okay? It says, In the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth, for Yahweh have spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God, the God of Israel, as it says in the book, of Luke, the first chapter, the Lord God of Israel. All right, let's read it again. Isaiah 25 and 9. This is what Paul is quoting. As he's talking about receiving those new bodies, as when we finish it up, that will be deliverance, full deliverance from sin. When we get those bodies, that's salvation in a nutshell, delivered into the chariots from our enemies. And given new bodies, that is not for all nations, brothers. And you sisters that is listening. As Baruch said, give not the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. Okay, the Lord has always intended the sons of God under the son of God to be at the forefront of things. Okay, and lead the rest of the heathen and show them the way. That glory he has established with himself. His son and that chosen seed is never between any other nation when you go into the scriptures. Okay. Let's read it again. Let's start at uh, eight Isaiah 25 and eight. This is the quote in first Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Okay. When this is brought to pass, this saying that is written will be brought to pass. Isaiah 25 and 8, he will swallow up death and victory, and the Lord God will wipe away the tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. And it shall be said in thy day, in that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. He will save us. Okay. This is Yahweh. We have waited for him. All right. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Paul is quoting this quote. See. 
So, and as you keep reading, because we know this was never written in chapter verse form, as you keep reading, it talks about how we're going to, uh, 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 the heathen are going to be trodden down. Moab should be trodden down. Was not Moab trodden down when David established the throne of David? He rejoiced and sung a song about it. Same thing is going to happen this time. Okay, in an even greater fashion. And when you keep reading, okay, Isaiah 26 and 1, in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah, all right, which is where Yahweh Shai came out of to do the good work to bring us back to the Father. He had to be born through the loins and lineage of Judah, through Perez, through David, all right, and you know the rest. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, salvation. Will God appoint for walls and boards, meaning we're going to be fully protected with these new bodies. All right. When the mortal puts on immortality. Immortality. All right. Verse 55. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? See, in these bodies, death has dominion over us and we eventually have to go to the grave. We go back to the earth. The sting of death is sin. Sin brings death. And the strength of sin is the law. When the laws are implemented in us, okay, we have the victory. Okay? But thanks be to Yahweh, the, the, the Most High God, Yahweh, who gives us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So he's letting you know, look, keep fighting because this is what we're fighting for. We're fighting to be brought back to our first estate, which Lord willing, I will do a video on that. We were given these bodies only for the mission. This is not our origin. OK, we have an origin and we'll go into that in another lesson. Isaiah 36 and uh, Ezekiel 36 and 22. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh. All right. Said the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. <laughs> their eyes that umar spirit all right for i will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land that's the promise then will i sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you okay and that water is the the spirit the, the new covenant a new heart will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart from out of your flesh. Remember, the laws were written on stone. OK. That first covenant we break and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit with you and cause you to walk in my statues and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land I gave your fathers and ye shall be my people and I will be your God. See that? I will save you from your uncleanliness and I will call the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And it keeps going. It just keeps going. It just gets better as you read that chapter. It's a beautiful chapter. That chapter is, you can't break that chapter. Yahweh Shai himself told you the scripture can't be broken. So what's this nastiness they're talking about on this article? <laughs> All right. Lies and things. OK. And you can read this chapter and it gives you the fall, you know, and everything else, man. So. This is this is weird. This is this is off. Christians off. Christianity is off. And that's why that guy, which could be an Israelite. All right. Um, 
who cursed out Vogue are tired of you. Everybody's tired of you. Get a life. You Christians, get a life, man. You, you all have had your time with your garbage religion and, and, and lying on the Bible. The truth is here. All right. Corruption is being overcome and the Heavenly Father is getting ready to redeem his people out of Babylon the Great as well as the four corners of the earth whether we are scattered, man. So. And notice in this chapter, I mean, no, nothing about the Israelites, nothing in this article is bringing up the Israelites. OK. They're bringing up. Uh, Protestants. Yeah, and see, they play on the English language, too. OK. But anyway, I just wanted to go into that just to uh, get the. Uh, the spirit flowing and uh, Lord willing, I'll be back with more later. I mean, of course, there could have been various more scriptures. OK. I mean, you just type in salvation in Israel. Salvation, Israel. Israel, salvation. Salvation, Zion. He remembered this mercy. Psalms 98 and 3. He remembered this mercy and truth towards the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Psalms 56, 53 and 6. Oh, that salvation that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion when God bring it back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. I guess all of these scriptures are just null and void now. See, that replacement theology crap, okay, it's going to get y'all extra fire. Okay, so we'll leave it there. Hopefully y'all edified on to the next. Shalom.